guys, this is Navin Reddy. In this video, we'll talk about something on network security. Now, this is your next part of the videos. Uh, in this, we'll talk about something called as cryptography. So, we have cryptography. Now, what is exactly cryptography means? So, in this, we have something called as plain text and then we have something called cipher text. Now, this plain text, it's something like it's a readable format. Cypher text, it's unreadable readable format. Now, in this world of internet, we what we want is we want security. Okay. So, what when you talk about security is something like you have a client and you have a server. You have to send this data to different servers, right? So, you have to send this data to the server. And what you don't want that anyone can hack this data. Okay. So, all your information on internet, you want it to be secure, right? And for that, you have to use something called as cryptography. Now, in this cryptography, what you have, uh, you will be having some plain text. So, we have some plain text and then we have something called as cipher text. What is plain text? It's readable format. You can read it. What is cipher text? It is unreadable format. If you are able to read it also, you will not exactly get what the, what's the actual content, right? So, let's suppose if your plain text is ABC and I'm making this cipher text as dot slash C. So, you can read this, right? This is dot slash C, but what it means? So, this is your plain text and the converted version of plain text is cipher text. So, we have dot slash C. So, what you have? Plain text and then we have cipher text. So, you have to convert this plain text into cipher text and the, uh, the analogy or the actual concept of this is called as cryptology. So, this, this study or the search of cryptography is called as cryptology. And then we have one more person who is called a script, script analyst. Those, uh, you can say hackers or you can say some professionals who can read the cipher text to understand the plain text. Okay, so we have these jargons. So we, we know about cryptography. It's a technology using which you can convert a plain text into cipher text. Then we have cryptology. It's the study or research of cryptography. Okay, so we, we have to deal with cryptology. So you're not learning IT now. You're learning about cryptology. Okay, so let's start with this. Okay. So now when you talk about this cryptography, you, we can achieve cryptography in two ways. One is called as uh, substitution method and second is called as transposition method. So we have in cryptography, we have two types. One is uh, substitution and when, when, then, then we have transposition. Now what is substitution? It's something like you will be having a text. And what we need to do is we need to change this text in different formats. So I, I will change A as Z and B as A and C as B. So what I'm doing, I'm converting each and every text into its particular format. Okay, so we, we are converting A in Z, B in A and C in B, right? So this is called as we are converting, we are substituting this, this values. So this is called as substitution. Not exactly trans, transposition means. Let's suppose if I have A, B, C, what I will do, I will just change the sequence. I can say C, B, A. Okay, so this is called as transposition. Okay, so this is this is how it works. But let, let's see in detail what are the types of substitution. Okay. <coughs> so you have substitution and then we have transposition, right? So we'll talk about substitution first. So we have substitution. In this substitution, what we have, we have first type as Caesar cipher. Now, what exactly Caesar cipher means? You know, let's suppose you're you're taking a text as A B C D. So this is your text, right? So what you can do, you can take each uh, value. Let's suppose you, you're isolating this number or this text as A B C D. Now, what CSI cipher says, you have to increment this uh, this value by 3. So, if I say plus 3 to this each of this uh, uh, character, what we will get is A plus 3, you will get as B. B plus 3, you will get as E and F and G, right? So, it's when you add 3, you will get this text. Now, this is your plain text and this is your cipher text right so simple so you have to if you take a, a character or string add that string by 3 you will get a new value and that's your cipher text so this is one type of encryption but the thing is reliable 
No, right? So if let's suppose if I send, if A sends this data to B and some, some way C try to hack it, what he will get is D, E, F, G. But do with some manipulation or with some mathematics, what you can guess is what if I do minus 3? He will get detected, right? So it's not secure. What I want, I want to make it more difficult for the hacker to hack it. See, we cannot say, I'm, I'm creating a cipher which cannot be, uh, we, we cannot break it. Anyone can break a cipher, right? So what we can do is we can make it difficult to break it. We cannot say it's impossible to break. We just can say it's difficult to break, okay? So to make it more difficult, what we can do is we can just, uh, we can go with the new version, which is the uh, modified version of CSI cipher. Now this modified version, instead of adding three, <coughs> Instead of adding 3, we can add any number. We can add a 5, we can add 20, we can add 25, we can add 3, we can add 2. So we can go with any number. Right? We can go with any number. Again, the number can max go from 0 to, 2, to uh, 0 to 25. Because again, if you make it 26, you will get the same text. right? So if, if I add A plus 26, again I will get A. So no logic of using 26 here. So I have to start with 0 or 25. Again, don't use 0. It's because if you're making a 0, you're getting the plain text. Okay? So we we'll start with 1. So you can use any number between 1 to 25. Now how it works? Instead of adding 3, you can add, so instead of 3, you can add a number called as 2. So if I go with 2, what I will get is, uh, let's suppose it's C, D, E, F, right? So it's it, it, we are making it difficult for the hacker to hack it. Again, this is also, we can also write this thing, right? Example, if I go with a text, Again, we'll go with the bookish example because it's much better to go with bookish example. So let's talk about this table. Okay, so if you talk about this table, now in this table you have your cipher text as K W U M. Uh, check for the focus. Check for the focus. Uh, it's K W U M P M Z M. Right. So this is your cipher text. Now let's suppose if this text is hacked by a Hacker. Now he will he will do some combinations, right? So first he will check for the number one. So he will he will try to apply a key as one. He will get this one. He will apply two. He will get this. He will apply three. He will get this. Let's suppose he applies six. So with six he will get Q C A S F S uh, V S F S. Now there is no logic in this text, right? But what if in this table if we goes for eighteen? If we go for eighteen, it's C. O M E H E R E, come here, right? So using this table, anyone can attack your machine or anyone can attack your data. So what we are, what we are making, we are making it difficult. We, we not, we are not saying it's foolproof, but we are making it difficult, right? So modified says it will make it difficult, but it's not foolproof. Let's go for more difficult thing, and the next more difficult thing is called as it's. Mono alphabetic. Now it is mono alphabetic. Now instead of going for the same key, see, remember, uh, if you talk about CS cipher, the key value is three, right? So when you talk about CS cipher, key value is three. For modified version, key value changes from one to twenty-five. But if you select a key as fifteen, so those are the characters you have to apply fifteen, right? So if for a text like Navin, if I go with my name, it's N A V I N. So I have to apply a key, let's like suppose 8 throughout. What if, if the hacker is able to crack the last letter? So he got the key, right? So he got the key as 8, he will apply the whole, the, the same key for all the text. What I want, if, if that hacker is able to attack one letter, he cannot be able to attack all the letters. And for that, you will be using monoalphabetic in this. Instead of going with the same key for every character, we'll go for different key for different characters. So example, if my name is Navin, so if it is N A V I N, so here I'll apply, apply a key as five, will apply a key as two, six, and I can repeat five and oh, let's let's go with three, and again I have to go with five. Now in this, so N becomes something, I don't know which M, N becomes something, A becomes something, B becomes something, and I becomes something, and then when you apply this key, you will get some text. Again, if if hacker able to hack I, he will not be able to hack B. Right, so it's we are making again we are making it difficult to hack. Okay, it's not again foolproof. We are making it difficult to hack again with multiple combinations. He will get again if you talk about multi, uh, combinations, 
uh, let me check what is the combination if in this uh, if you apply modified it has to work for 25 combinations simple but if you are going for a monoalphabetic we have to go for 4 into 10 raised to 2 uh, 26 combinations very difficult for humans but not difficult for computers right so because if you talk about attacks attacks are done by computers not humans this number is big for humans not for computers so a computer can attack this much then this code let's make it more difficult the problem with this is if i'm assigning a key for n we have same keys right so for this n it's 5 for this n it's 5 what if if i if i go with the different key for n for this n i'm making 5 for this key, this for this n i will make it uh, let's suppose 7 right so this is possible with the next one and the next one is called as it's monophonic sorry it's not monophonic it's homophonic so what we have we have CSI cipher uh, we have modified version we have monoalphabetic and then we have homophonic now in homophonic uh, in this case what we have we have the same characters right or same thing in homophonic what we can do is we can change this so like, like in this way let's suppose I can replace n with a I can replace n with e or i or o or u so this is one of the set right again there is no compulsion we have to go with vowels this example right so I can replace uh, n with all this thing I can replace a with k j l o s right so what I'm doing is not going for one key for each character I'm going for multiple keys for one character right so this is the power of homophonic now we are making it more difficult for the hacker to attack right so you can imagine he is going for the more combination than this and again we are not we are not saying it's foolproof we are just making it difficult for the computer to attack because this number this permutation can be done by computer that's why this is this is also can be hacked but it will take lots of time to attack this so this is your homophonic uh what next we have uh, this next we have is polygram notice polygram in this uh, instead of instead of substituting the character we will cut we will just change the block of keywords or block of characters so instead of like if I write hello so instead of hello instead of changing each and every character I will change the whole block okay so if my whole block becomes o u i s again you can you can go with any characters right any keys but let's suppose if i convert hello in this so i'm not converting each character i'm converting the whole block so this hello will be replaced by q o u i s right it's our choice how to replace it now that doesn't mean now if you go with this concept uh what will be the cipher for what is going on Okay. so we have help right so what what will be the help cyber text again by your guess it should be y o u i right but the amazing part is it's not you can go with any other combination you can go with uh, e s o t you can go with any combination it's your choice right so if hello is this that doesn't mean help will be this but if you're going for substitution methods like uh, homophonic or polyalpha uh, monoalphabetic you have to select select this one but the amazing part with polygram you can go with the any block with any characters right so that's your polygram again we are making it more difficult for the hacker to attack let's go for next one uh, next one is polyalphabetic uh, all that okay the next one is polyalphabetic okay now in this Polyalphabetic uses something called as beginner table. Notice beginner table. Uh, again, you can have to say the table. If you can see, I have a table here. Okay, so this is your table, and this table name is beginner table. Again, it's table A because it's from uh, maybe from different countries. So we have to table. We have to say it as table. Now in this table, you have to go with some key or with some uh, plain text. So let's suppose this is your plain text okay and your key is here so if i say my plain text character is k so if i'm going with k so k is here and if let's suppose my cipher for that or key for that is s so somewhere down the line you have to go with k as the uh, column and 
s as the row somewhere you will get as c right so for replacement for k is c now so it's not replacement for k is not your s it will be c okay so that's the power of beginner in this you have to convert each letter with multiple keys right so like for k you don't have specific set what you have you can go with any characters so let's suppose your key is s then you have to use, this is your plain character and this is your key using this you have to use a table called as beginner table and what you will get is c so replacement for k is c right again we are making it more difficult for the hacker to tag because in polyalphabetic you have to refer a table unfortunately any everybody has that table so if you have a table you can do some manipulation you can guess something and you can come out with the plain text again you can be attacked right so Again, I'm not saying it's foolproof. I'm just saying we're making it difficult for the hacker to attack. So, so we have polygram and we have polyalphabetic. Uh, what next? Uh, and then one of the most amazing concept in this something called as pair play. And pair play will continue with the next video. Thank you.